I've made cakes of so many fruits and vegetables, but I haven't made a cake of one of the most popular fruits going, a tomato. That changes today. My name is Natalie Sidesurf of Sidesurf Cake Studio, and I make cakes that don't look like cakes. And today, I'm gonna show you how I made a tomato cake. I could make an uncut tomato, but that's too easy. So I'm making a sliced tomato cake to showcase those juicy tomato innards. I've got a round layer of vanilla cake. Then I spread a layer of vanilla buttercream, which is the color green, because I like the color green, and top it with a second layer of cake. I'm carving the top edges of the cake with a serrated knife. This is very simple. I just want to round out the shape. Then I take a little off the top, a little off the bottom, and that creates that wide oval shape of a tomato hat. I need a smooth surface to work on, so I cover the entire cake in a layer of buttercream, and then I pop it in the fridge to firm up. Cornstarch keeps the modeling chocolate from sticking to my mat while I roll it out. Now I take the chilled cake out of the fridge and I cover it in the modeling chocolate. I just work it around the sides and then trim away the extra chocolate. I pick the cake up and turn it over and now I can work on the top of the cake. I'm carving out two cavities, just like you see on a real tomato. The cavities are kind of bean shaped, like a kidney bean, one on the left, one on the right. Then I spread a thin layer of buttercream over the cake and I cover it in modeling chocolate and I blend the edges. I'm using sculpting tools to shape the cavities to give them a sharper edge. Then I just press a hard bristled brush into the top to add a very subtle texture. For the tomato seeds, I just ball up a little itty bitty tiny piece of chocolate into the shape of a seed. And now we paint. I've got a few colors here. We've got yellow, white, ivory, red, and green. I'm diving in. I need to paint the top of this tomato to look as close to the real tomato as I possibly can. Back when I used traditional art media to create art rather than cake, I used to study painting. I used oil paints rather than food color back then, but the two are kind of similar. I mean, food color is much more difficult to paint with in my opinion, but I can still compare the two. Something that makes painting with food color pretty difficult is you can go to the store and buy two different brands of food color and they will both be called red, but they are very different colors of red. One brand may be heavy on the orange, so it's more of an orange red, and one may lean more purple, which results in a pinkish red. You can even see the difference in this tomato. The center is a more cool purple red and the outside edges are a warmer orange red. It's very rare that I can rely on color right out of the bottle to be the color that I need. When you look up close at this tomato, you can see all the different colors and tones. But when you take a step back and you look at it from a distance, the colors just blend together and it just looks red. The inside of the tomato is gelatinous. So I'm using gelatin to create this effect. I sprinkle two packets of gelatin over eight tablespoons of water. Then I let the powder soak up that water for about five minutes. I microwave the mixture until the gelatin is dissolved in the water. Then I add a small amount of ivory food color and scoop out the foam. We just want clear gelatin, no foam. And back to the cake. I'm filling the cavity with modeling chocolate to create what is called the placenta. I'm not filling the entire cavity of this little lady with modeling chocolate because I want to leave a little room on the outside edge where I can put the gelatin. I'm using a syringe to fill the cavity with gelatin only halfway. Then I let the gelatin set. And once firm, I place the little chocolate seeds inside and then I add more gelatin on top. Followed by more seeds and another layer of gelatin and a last final layer of seeds and gelatin. The seeds really do look like they're suspended in the tomato gelatin. This is awesome. It's so much better than just filling it with gelatin and then placing a few seeds on top. Now I wanna know what other objects I can make using this technique. Let me know in the comments if you can think of any. I'm adding a little bit of shine by dabbing a tiny bit of glaze on the top of the tomato with a brush. And now I'll paint the sides. The color on the sides is slightly uneven. It's a little splotchy. To create the leaves and stem, I'm painting green food color onto a piece of edible wafer paper. Then I cut out thin leaves, kind of in the shape of a star. I'm doing this freehand, just kind of eyeballing it. Once the edible paper is completely dry, I attach it to my mater with a little bit of water. The stem is a little chunk of green modeling chocolate with some ivory at the end. And there you have it, a sliced tomato cake. I absolutely love the gelatin inside. And anytime I get to hand paint something, I have a good time. Now let's cut it. I have a favor, you guys. If you like this cake, 
please share this video with your friends. It helps me get more reach, which allows me to keep making these cake videos for you. Liking this video and subscribing to my channel is a huge help too. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week for another cake.